Thomas Merton. He'll probably go down as the most significant American Catholic of the 20th century. He uh, died in 1968, tragically. And shortly before that, he wrote a poem called When in the Soul of the Serene Disciple. I read it when I was making a retreat there in Kentucky uh, and never forgot it. I'm first going to read it and then give you just a slight, not the whole chapter of commentary, but a slight commentary. Because for me, he sums up in this poem the freedom and the grace and the compassion of a second half of life person. When in the soul of a serene disciple, with no more fathers to imitate, see, first half of life is all imitating what other people say. Poverty is now a success. And po he's not talking about material poverty, he's talking about inner freedom, where I don't have to be certain that I'm right or I'm best. It's a small thing now to say that the roof is gone. I don't even have a house. <laughs> Stars as well as friends are angry with my noble ruin. You tend to lose some friends when you become a second half of life person, I warn you. You can't join in the usual jokes at the cocktail party anymore. The way everybody in Texas talks will not be your way of talking. I'm sorry to tell you that. Uh, the, the totally Republican agenda, the total Democrat agenda, which your cocktail party group wants you to buy into, you can't anymore. You can't. You know better. You know that it's not true. You know that it's a lie, in fact. Huh? So you often just have to put your head down or keep quiet. Or, or what I often just say is, well, I have to think about that a little more. No point in correcting people. That never does any good. Stars as well as friends are angry with your noble ruin. Saints are departing in all directions. I quote in this last book, uh, Teresa of Avila's wonderful line. She says, oh God, deliver me from, from most saints. These sanctimonious people who are born again. It's like, oh my God. If this is the goal, I don't want to go there, you know. And that's not always true, but too often it is true. Be still. There is no longer any need of comment. That's all the mind does is make endless commentary on everything all the time. And that's what contemplation teaches you not to do. Don't do it. Don't believe it. Don't believe your own PR because it's all about you. And it's all about your own anger and your own fear and your own agenda. And it, is, it won't get you very far. So you, you need a new way of thinking. Be still. There is no longer any need of comment. It was a lucky wind that blew away your halo with all your care. It was a lucky sea that drowned your reputation. Brothers and sisters, if you have a good reputation, be careful. You've got to live up to it. You've got to pretend it's true. <laughs> and you've got to keep, keep pretending at ever higher levels. One reason I became a Franciscan is because, if you know anything about the life of St. Francis, he tried to be the lowest man in town. So he'd had nothing to prove and nothing to protect and nothing to live up to. Here at this place, Merton says, you will find neither a proverb nor a memorandum. Now there are no ways, no perfectly right ways that are always true for everybody all the time. There are no methods to admire. I don't know if we should tell the Methodists that there are no methods to admire. <laughs> Poverty now is no achievement. It's just what you fall into when you're honest and humble. Here God lives in my emptiness like an affliction. What choice remains? Well, now, he wrote this about 67. He dies in 68. What choice remains? Well, to be ordinary is not a choice. It's the usual freedom 
of men without their visions. Their visions, their idealized notions of what they have to be to be superior or to be loved by God. So you can see a man at the end of his life pretty much free from everything. Not needing to, to please, but not wanting to displease either. Living in that freedom of knowing and not knowing at the same time. That's second half of life freedom. 